Hi guys, welcome to my session on Python and in today's session we are going to deal with certain important topics in Python like uh, handling keywords, Python keywords, then uh, indentation and uh, how to get the dynamic inputs from user. So let me list it down so that it will be easy for our understanding. I'm just opening my notepad. We'll start with keywords in Python and we will move with indentation then uh, we will look at command line arguments how to handle those things then uh, we will deal with handling user inputs and in this case we have two things one is a raw input and input right okay so these are the topics we are going to cover today let me go to I have few slides now so reserve keywords the reserve keywords are the reserved words in Python which cannot be used as variable names function names and or any identifier so it is very very important in Python we Python is totally dynamic but we have to be very careful with reserved keywords. We cannot use these words for any of the stuff like variable names, function names, module names or anything. So Python is very uh, strict in that and you have to follow these syntaxes. Right. So let me get into the Python interpreter and show you what happens when you want to deal with these kind of keywords. Python is case sensitive. So in that case, it is always important when I have something like equal to 100. See, I can check my type of A is end and I can just print A. You get the details. Capital A equal to 200. When I do something like this, check the type of A is end, print A. So these are different. How can you see this? When I use the command AR, you see capital A and small A are different. So I just want to make sure you people understand this. Let me get back to the keywords. If I use if equal to 400. See, it's an invalid syntax because if you say keyword and when I try something like this, while equal to 30, again, it throws up an error because while is also a keyword. But if I use something like this, it doesn't throw up any error. I check in DAR if it's there, if it's a variable, I can check the type of if. So, yeah, it's an integer, and I can print if as well. You can handle things like this, but it is always advised you shouldn't be using these keywords in any of the forms in your variables or function names or module names or whatsoever, it will create confusion. When you yourself look at your code, you will get confused. So though if this is allowed, you shouldn't be using it. This is allowed because Python is case sensitive. It treats this differently when compared to our if which is a keyword. <coughs> Sorry. So how to have know all these things? What are the keywords in Python? If you want to know all the stuff, inbuilt Python module has something called keyword. There is a module called keyword. Import keyword you don't want to install this because it's a default module you just want to import it to see what are the things available in keyword uh, we know as we all know i can use dir and it's not empty dir it's keyword you have to use the model name when you use this see it has certain things like is keyword kw list main all these built-in variables or functions whatever it is so let me use kw list keyword dot kw list when i do this since it is a list i believe it's a variable you see it is a list it lists you all your python keywords so these keywords you cannot use it in any form irrespective of uppercase or lowercase in lowercase it will throw up an error if you are using it in uppercase it will still allow you but refrain from using all those things right there is one more thing called is keyword with that it will help you to identify whether it is a keyword or not so let's try that keyword dot is keyword see 
if I'm passing if oh sorry I have to pass it in quotes see if is a keyword so it is giving me true if I want to find and is a keyword yes it is true if I pass in capital and see it's not a keyword that's why it is allowing us to create variable names in, the, in this format uppercase of ant not only uppercase even this can be created throw some error whereas capital A alone creates as variables and you can check that using is keyword capital A and D is not a keyword right got it so this is what we are going to see as part of this result keywords they are used to define the syntax and structure of the python language all the python keywords contain lowercase letters only right these are a few listed uh, keywords in python but we have seen in the keyword module using the keyword module all the keywords available in python so just have it in mind next we are moving on to indentation indentation fine so what is indentation inundation the explanation of inundation is spaces you have to give spaces whenever required fine how does this fit in python let me go back so i'm just wiping this out good so let me maximize this let's take a simple program if a simple if else condition in some language like java or c c plus plus whatever it is this will be the syntax you people follow if then you go for condition then you people open a plot bracket and then put in your statements statement one colon statement two colon. then you write something like this statement three colon statement four colon then you close this floor bracket which means end of if block then else statement two statement one statement two statement three you can put it like this right so you can write something like this which means uh, i think i made a mistake yeah right it is right if condition you open the floor bracket then you put your statement each and every statement is delimited by colon sorry semicolon then you close this floor bracket else section opens up open it with a flower bracket then put your statement separated by uh, semicolon and you close it with a flower bracket this is how you write it so how you are compiler or your programming syntax works here so if you look at it if condition check then the if block starts as soon as you put this flower bracket as soon as you put this flower bracket and inside this flower bracket whatever comes in till you see another counterpart of that floor bracket everything comes under your if block that is the understanding and inside the floor bracket each and every statement is delimited by a semicolon which means each and every statement is separated using the semicolon which means in this if block i have four statements right that is our understanding and the same goes with else block as well so in this else block we have three statements each and every statement is separated by a semicolon that's the understanding of this programming structure fine in python this is totally ruled out because python doesn't have flower brackets as well as semicolons so how do how do we deal in python all these cases let let me explain if we go with if which is a keyword then i will go with the condition right so I go for a key if keyword and I go for the condition and there is no flower bracket there is no semicolon just have this in mind then what is there to indicate that there is a start of the block here we do indicate start of the block using a colon so colon indicates start of the block so I'm just giving a comment here colon indicates start of the block right so now each and every statement is there is no semicolon so how to give your statements how what it says that each and every statement is separate here when you indicate start of the block 
the next statement whichever belonging to if has to be moved certain places from the beginning so which means from this cursor point i can move one space two space three space doesn't matter you have to move certain spaces that's it so at least one space you have to move away from the if where the if you are if you are where your if starts and here i need to give my statement one right so in this case i have moved one two three three spaces and my statement one is there right so where to place my second statement there is no semicolon so you have to go to the next statement even your next statement should be consistent with your spaces when compared to statement one two three four so i just gave one two three three spaces right one two three yeah three spaces statement two then statement three one two three statement three one two three statement four yeah here's this is how you have to write your coding in python so after your if block is over then we have to go with our else else should be consistent without this if and it has to start in the same line same level then colon which indicates start of the block as like this then then my else statement should be moved at least one space in this case i can move two spaces statement one then two spaces statement two statement three yeah that's it so this if is starting here when you see this colon then it has to be more certain spaces in this case i move three spaces then i had all my statements i have all your statements should be consistent i can't do something like this if first statement three spaces second statement two spaces it is not allowed it should be consistent if you if you are leaving four spaces for the first statement then all your statements should be moved four spaces from the beginning similarly else where else block is started as soon as you give your colon then consistent number of spaces i give three spaces here doesn't matter all the statements should have three spaces this is how you write your code so in python readability is given more importance and this indentation colon everything is strictly followed if you give a space something like this if you give a space here it will throw up an error because you shouldn't leave unnecessary space in python at the same time you should leave space when it is required in python that's what that is mandatory i'm sure for you people it will be initially like a bit tricky but once you get to all these things in python you will be very much comfortable and i'm sure that if you write some other programming language even there you will follow all these standards which will make your code neat and clean and it will be easy for other people to understand so that is in short short so let me go to our interpreter i will show you uh, suppose something like a equal to 100 and b equal to 300 i have to write my statement like this if a greater than b i have to start a block i am putting my statement colon which indicates start of the block then in the next line remember at least i need to move one space and what is the standard followed in python so python standard is four white spaces so just you can put your tab also that will be more more clear and that is also accepted but as per python standard it is only four white spaces i'm just printing print int if block then the next statement again same number of spaces print a is greater then else block colon enter so else statement has to be moved doesn't matter the same level even i can put in one level print in else block same level of spaces print b is greater that's it press one more enter and it will be running the statement see here in else block b is greater that's our logic suppose if i'm doing some mistake so if some, something like if a greater than b colon press enter if i write my print statement here see inundation expected so you have to leave at least one space 
since I didn't give it here, it is throwing up an error. Let me try it now. I am giving one space and then printing it. Just copying and pasting it. See, it is not giving me any error. If I give the second statement without giving any space, it will throw me an error saying that invalid syntax. So, whatever I have said here, you have to follow this. Each and every block of statement, if you are starting some block, put it a, put a colon which indicates start of the block, then the next statement has to be indented. Okay, what happens in your IDE? Suppose let me take that I am opening by charm. So it will take some time. All IDEs will handle these inundation automatically. So you don't want to worry about inundation. That is like once you give you a colon, which means the very next line, it will be automatically moved certain spaces and you don't worry about IDEs. But when you handle those things in interpreter, it's you yourself need to handle everything. So it doesn't take care of in an irritation that is not taken care in Python interpreter. But you will get used to it only if you are if you are getting things done in interpreter. Interpreter helps you to learn a lot of things, whereas IDE makes you lazy. But in, as part of this course, we will be shuttling between interpreter and IDEs. Uh, so that certain things I will show you in IDE, certain things I will show you in interpreter. This one I have to show you in an interpreter because you will be understanding it only when you are learning in an interpreter. Right, so that's it for as far as inundation is concerned. Let's look at the slide. So leading white spaces at the beginning of a logical line is used to compute the inundation level of the line, which is in turn is used to determine the grouping of statements. Inundation is must in Python. There are no braces to indicate blocks of code for Python and function, class or function, definitions or flow control. Blocks of code are denoted by the line inundation, which is rigidly enforced. The number of spaces in the inundation is variable, but all statements within the block must be inundated at the same amount. Standard is to use four white spaces as per official recommendation. Some editors automatically, automatically takes care of the inundation, like PyCharm or Jupyter Notebooks, so they, they will automatically take care of it. Right, now let me open it in PyCharm. So, Let me take this b equal to 10, b equal to 20, if a greater than b colon. See, once I press enter, it is automatically making my indentation. So, print, I'll just copy it so that it is easy for me. Print. else colon see once press enter it will automatically put in inundation so no need to worry about all these things in an id right so let me run it see it's pretty cool if i do some mistake here i'm moving one statement one space giving one space here whereas this is moved by four spaces see IDE will give as per Python standard one two three four four white spaces as I said you before standard is four white spaces see it is automatically giving you an error saying unexpected intent so all these has to be in the same level suppose I don't give the space it will give up an error saying that it is in an indent expected which means it has to be moved certain spaces. So ID helps you. So we are good with inundation. So I'm just going back to the slide. And the next thing what we are going to see is running a Python script. So we know that I can run my script using IDE. At the same time, I can run this in command prompt also. So let me go to command prompt, open command prompt. Right, so using command prompt, I can run my same Python script. So to run this script, the syntax is Python space your file name. And to give your file name, you have to give the entire path of your file. Since my file is in e got to Python training, so I can give something like this e got to can press tab so that it will autofill. Python 
find confight then demo dot so you have to give python space the entire path of the file once you do this see you can run this in command prompt this is the syntax the same is followed in uh, unix or linux ubuntu terminals as well python space your entire file path along with the file name suppose i am already in e block in the same i am already in the same path suppose i am in python files folder right then i can just give python space demo dot py this will do for me so i'm clear you people are getting understand i you people understood that how to run the python script using your command prompt so that is our third thing then let's get into command line arguments so how to pass in command line arguments when you are running something in your python so let me change the code here print welcome to python session right let me have this code let me run this right it is perfectly printing welcome to python session and for people who need to know something like how to see the file contents of this demo.py in uh, uh, windows command prompt is you have to use the command more more demo dot py it will give you the contents inside that file uh, which is something like cat in your linux cat file name will give you the same thing you will see the file contents it will not run your file it will give you the file contents so let me run it it is giving me this suppose i want to pass in my name which has to be displayed along with this uh, welcome to python session if i pass gautam it has to show welcome to python session gautam and command line argument is something while running in command prompt you pass in your value something like this so that has to be caught inside your program and it has to display welcome to python session uh, comma gautam so suppose if i'm giving ram it has to show welcome to python session ram so how to do those things for that there is a module called sys in python so you have to import import sys so in sys there is a variable called sys.rv so let me print the command line r q minus r Sys dot rp. So when you give this, so let me run it in command prompt. I'm just giving this. See here. So using the sys module, when I when I printed the sys dot rp variable, it is giving me the file name and then the argument whatever I passed here. Now it must be easy for us to to index it. or take it based on the index and print it here let me try that so i'm just giving it here welcome to python session i'm putting a comma and let me show you these things are indexed this is nothing but a list so we haven't seen list yet but don't worry it is very simple the list first element is accessed by list of 0 and second element by list of 1 so in our case we need list of 1 so i'm just using the index sys dot R V of one. Run it. See, it is printing us whatever is required. If I pass something like RAM, it will give me welcome to Python session RAM. So whatever values you are passing in can be caught inside your program and it can be used used there in your programming. Fine. What if I am passing some numbers as command line arguments and I want to do the summing of those numbers? Let's try those things. Let me change the Python code. Suppose I take a equal to sys dot arg v of one because I want I know zeroth element is our file name. Let me print print the command line arguments sys dot arg v. And B is the next element. Let me pass two elements. I can pass any number of elements. 
and I'm printing a comma b so that let's first see it let me pass 10 and 20 yeah it is printing me perfectly a and b let me modify this to print my sum print the sum as a plus b that's it so i'm running my script let me pass some different numbers 30 and 50 see what happened oh so it is printing it as 30 50 so it has not done addition it has did a concatenation so in what case it will do concatenation when it is strings passed for plus operator it will do a concatenation is that passed as strings yes so whatever values you are passing in your command line arguments it is taking it as strings c30 has been passed as strings it is within the single quotes so which means it is passed as a string so what i need to do so let's convert this into an integer this is called type casting let me convert this into an integer right let me run this code now cool we are good with this so uh, we know that whatever passed in command line arguments it is passed as a string so we are converting that into an integer and then we are doing the sum operation cool let me try this with a float will it work oh float doesn't work so we have certain limitations here so whenever you are passing in as command line argument it is passed as strings when it is compatible you can convert it to this to an integer or any other type and if it is not compatible it will throw you some error like this so we have limitations in command line arguments we cannot go proceed beyond those limitations so when can i use all these command line arguments i can pass in a file path i can access the file path inside this program display the list of files inside it i can do some analytics uh, in using using that file path or move certain files from i can pass in two different file paths pass copy all the files from one path to the second path i can do all those things so remember command line arguments everything is passed as a string not as anything like integer or it doesn't dynamically take in the data types unless otherwise you can convert something like this into your program fine so i'm just stopping it here we are yet to see i said that we'll be looking at getting user inputs as well as part of this video since uh, uh, this is going as a lengthy video what i will do is like i will cover getting input raw input and input in my next video so that's it as of today so i'm just closing this session if you have any questions post it in the comments bye thank you